Hello, so so far we built a home page and an about us page and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at building a simple footer for our website. So in this tutorial I want to talk a little bit about the the grid system in a bit more detail for you to get an idea of the the breakpoints or where we can control the page at different resolutions to allow us to control what's on the page to um, allow us to manipulate how the design looks so it fits into smaller screen resolutions for example because we've all seen websites on mobile phones that screen's resolution or the screen width is a lot smaller than obviously a desktop computer so much of the information on a on a mobile is very much vertically based so we need to be able to manipulate our page so that when it um, decreases for example like this you can see how um, everything now is vertical based and then we move back again and you can see this appears after a certain uh, width so we need to be able to control these type of aspects to make better designs so our de website design is suitable for mobile and desktop so this is a simple example of a, a footer you can see that um, everything is sort of horizontal here and then at a certain break point um, we go into this vertical list so we're going to have a look at how to uh, achieve this using bootstrap so let's uh, go into the code right so we'll save this um, and we'll go back to our page and just make sure that that's refreshed so we've got rid of that so let's rebuild this so the first thing to understand is if you go into the grid system page uh, it's worth reading this page uh, through top to bottom to get an idea of what's um, happening but I want to concentrate on this page here so you can see that there's some breakpoints here and there's a reference to each breakpoint uh, with a different class prefix so we're going to be using different class prefix to help control when the page changes so for example here uh, if I use col lg for example that refers to large so something would happen on the page or I can make something happen on the page when it reaches this uh, this size so let's go into our code and start building a simple footer so just to uh, make sure we know where we are we've got the container here and remember this container controls the width of this page so we'll just go into f12 and we'll go back into our um, pphd resolution here so that's what it looks like at the moment so we're going to um, utilize this container still and we're going to put the footer inside of this container so we're going to start off by using a semantic piece of HTML5 footer tag. So we open up the footer tag and we close the footer tag. That's the first thing we do. So we define the footer. And now we're going to build a row, a new row. So I realize what? Um, so we're going to build a new row. And we close the row okay so now we've got a new row to work with so um we saw that in the the preview of that footer we had four sections the first section we had like an, an asset or um, a logo and then we had uh, three different unordered lists so we're going to start off uh, building um, the first section it's going to be a div So we need four sections. So I'm just gonna first of all style this with a class, and I'm gonna be using class in this case col md. So what that's gonna do is if I copy this four times, it's gonna create four equal um, equal width divs across the page 
So if I just type in A, B, C, and D. So what I should have now on the page, like I said, is uh, four boxes across of equal width. There we go. So you can see that they're equal width. Obviously, the uh, container ends right there. So that's a good start. So notice I use col md. So going back to the um, bootstrap page, something should happen. Uh, so notice that medium is from 768. So if my browser goes below 768, it's no longer medium. And I'm saying that um, I'm using col md to define that I want this to happen. I'm saying basically I, I want to use um, four equal width divs when the screen is above, in this case, 768 pixels. But if it goes below that, it means that I have no control at all, haven't defined any column widths at all. So therefore, all the divs will then go on top of each other by default. So that's what's happening here. Um, let's just see that in action. So we've got this here. Let's go into the responsive. So you can see as I go down, when I get to, um, I haven't got to the, the number yet. So uh, 768, remember? So you can see that when it's below 768, all the boxes just turn into um, vertical replaced boxes. And when I go above that number, again, 768, you can see that then they are then being styled or being controlled because that's what I've asked it to do by using the col md. So if I were, for example, to now use col lg, here we're looking at the number 992. So what I'm going to say now is that when the screen is above 992, um, I want you to use or I want you to line the boxes up next to each other and when you're below that you can you're not styled at all so therefore the boxes will disappear on top of each other so let's see if that works so we're looking at 992 now so if I refresh that obviously we're not at 992 yet the width so when I get past 992 you can see that that happens so you can see that I'm controlling uh, when that breakpoint, when the divs change from horizontal to, horizontal to vertical. Okay, so what I can do now is to say, well, I want to style this <coughs> div when it is below that point. So if I place a different style before this, well, that's what's going to... Um, be applied once the resolution goes below the breakpoint of this col md. So that says 12. So what's obviously going to happen now is that this div is going to use the whole width and I'm going to place these others on col column 6. So what should happen now is that this div should stretch the whole um, container. And then what I should have is two divs next to each other, six and six, 12, utilizing the um, grid. It goes up to 12. <coughs> and then underneath that will then be this uh, column here, which will take up half the screen size. So let's have a look, see if that works. So we're gonna start off right there. So when we get to under seven, Six eight, um, that first style I just um, included should take over. There we go. So you can see that A is now, you can just about see that A is now um, using full width. We've got half and a half, and this will be utilizing half <coughs> of the screen also. So you can see how you can start to control um, how these divs are shaped at different sizes or screen resolutions. Okay, so the next thing to do um, is now to add some items inside. So this is 
this top one here is going to be utilized for the logo maybe or um, the name of your company or the website so here I'm just going to use a h5 tag and I'm going to copy that so I'm going to use that h5 tag on on them all so this is going to be a head in e heading in each section so the first section is going to be my company name or website name <coughs> then the second row I'm going to build a list uh, of features that you can link to in this website and then the next row is going to have resources links to resources on my website and then the last one is going to be about <coughs> the company <coughs> or the website so let's have a look to see what that looks like we're going to get out of this mode now so that's what we've got so far now what would be useful if there was um, some sort of gap so let's use inside of the footer let's try border top obviously that needs to be a in the class so this is a, a baked in or a built-in option in bootstrap so if we do that and press refresh you can see now i've got a um, a border applied so obviously what I need to do now is add some sort of uh, padding or margin. So let's do that. So I want to include padding top of case four. So I've added some padding so you can now see there's a nice gap here. So we'll deal with the um, gap in a second, but let's just go back into uh, creating these lists. So we're going to create some unordered lists in these sections here. <coughs> um, so an unordered list. And when we make an unordered list, let's just sort of one by default. You'll notice that there'll be some styling applied to it. So we have an unordered list and then we have a list item. So every list item, li. <coughs> so let's see what that looks like. Option one. you can see that this light list items got uh, by default a bullet point so you don't often see bullet points being utilized in lists um, in the footer so we need to neutralize that so we can do that um, by let me just remove that apologies I put that in the wrong place that was in the website name so we're going to put it in the features that was our first list <coughs> So in order to get rid of that list, what we need to do is use the class unordered or um, list unstyled in this case, list dash unstyled. Okay, so that should get rid of, that should get rid of the bullet points. There we go. And we can just continue with that. So we can make a other options. <coughs> there we go. So I'll do the same to all the items here. So resources um, and about. So now what we should have is a, a nice footer starting to appear. So 
at this point we can test to make sure that um, it's working so everything is working nicely when it gets to that size or screen resolution it changes great so the next thing we need to do is to sort out this padding up the top so I wanted to pause uh, before I showed you the margin because in this instance if you remember we need to think back to the box model the CSS box model so if we have a div if you remember in the box model and then what we do is we apply padding around the box or the div so this is a, a div so this is padding this is how we apply it but if you remember um, I think I mentioned that or didn't in actual fact mention in the previous um, box model example is that the border is applied after the padding so if we had tried to apply padding um, it will always be before um, <coughs> the border so for example in our example if I tried to apply um, padding here then it would just appear like this underneath it so in order for us to actually put um, some sort of space between the border upwards or downwards or sideways then we need to actually apply the um, the margin because the margin gap is after the border so the padding of is applied from the div box to the border and then the margin is applied from the border up outwards in each direction of course so what we need to do now is go back into our code and use a margin top so MT margin top and then we're going to apply a 4 again so if I save that when I go back that will give us a nice <coughs> gap there so add five to that there we go okay so that's a very simple footer uh, one last thing I guess we could also apply here if we wanted to um, add obviously links here we would obviously need to use um, the a the anchor tag h um, and then obviously wrap that up an anchor tag and then obviously uh, include the link so let's just look at that see what that looks like okay notice that um, the option now has gone blue so de by default it puts the, uh, the indication the blue indication that it, it is a link now that's not always what we want uh, so bootstrap has has a class so we can mute that if we want to so class equals and then it's text muted so this class is going to mute that um, back to a normal colored text there we go so we still got the underline and it's still a link so that will link us to wherever we want to go okay so that was a uh, an overview of utilizing the grid system boundaries to apply a, a dynamic um, page or to create a dynamic page for different screen resolutions we built the the footer for our page obviously at this point we probably need to copy and paste this onto our index page also on every other page or any other page we have obviously I'm doing this before the last div because I want to keep it inside of the container so make sure you do that and let's just see that in place if I go to the home page you can see now we've got the footer on the page also so obviously up to you now to change the different elements here and um, the links and the options and so on